We are here in a Zoom meeting. I'm Qing Yuan. I'm the liaison officer of Association of North American Chinese Evangelical Free Churches and the Evangelical Free Churches of America. I'm also on the board member of EFC Network. I'm joined by Dr. David Bao, the Dean of Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. It's delightful and privilege to have you with me in this Zoom meeting. We'd love to know a little bit about you. Um, I'm David. I grew up in Hong Kong and came to the States in the mid 80s. Um, I was a Wheaton grad and then I went to Boston and finished my graduate school. Uh, I have been teaching at Trinity for the past 25 years. Um, and prior to my role as dean, um, I was the chair of the New Testament department for 10 years. Mm. I have one wife and two kids and now one puppy. Yep. And then which, since you have been in Trinity, your Jacob Division School for that long, what is the uniqueness of text? Yeah, when I was graduating, I was hoping to serve at a school that would affirm biblical authority, but at the same time be able to interact with the needs of the church and also the contemporary co context. So here at TESS, I feel that we will be able to, and we have been able to, uh, focus squarely on the authority of the Bible, mm. affirming inerrancy, and at the same time be able to interact with academia at large, but also being connected to the churches. So um, academia, uh, biblical authority, church connectedness, um, that is how I describe TEDS. Mm. Since you have been in Trinity for that length of time, so what do you think about most challenge that TEDS have been dealing with throughout the, your years? What's the most challenge? For the past 25 years or so, uh, we have been resisting mm. the temptation to be pragmatic oh. while insisting to be practical. So in the sense that we affirm the importance of the Bible, we try to speak into different issues uh, using or basing on the biblical material. Mm. But at the same time, we do not simply look at numbers. We do not simply look at um, what is popular and trendy we tend to focus on the text. So the challenging part is um, how can we attract students that can be more and more pragmatic uh, in recent years um, into the serious study of the word. Our insistence on Greek and Hebrew, one example, mm -hmm. is, um, is a good example. Uh, when I first came to TETS, mm -hmm. when I was graduating from Harvard, um, at that point, my prof would ask, um, where exactly are you going? And I said, Tets. And then they will say, well, that is exactly the place that will be emphasizing Greek and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So uh, at Tets, we emphasize the importance of the inerrant word. We want to spend time on the word. Um, and um, But then we need to, at the same time, convince the contemporary generation to be able to spend time, enough time, to provide a serious study of the inerrant word. Um, so that'll be the cha challenge. Mm. And then uh, uh, for the sake of really dig into God's word, it takes a lot of time. So I just have uh, come to as a, also a seminary student before. It's a, a challenge, you know, it's, a, it's just like a tension between the time you dig into God's will and the time you do the ministry, also the time you spend with uh, your family. How, how, how you help the student? Uh, it can be difficult, um, but our firm conviction is that it is worth spending time on the Word. Um, yes, it may take years. Um, yes, it will take hours per week. Mm -hmm. But then if we affirm that the inerrant Word mm -hmm. is important for us, mm -hmm. then we need to focus on every single part of it, every single detail in the Word. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, a pragmatic pull is always there, but then we need to focus on the word being central. Having said that, we need to be practical as well. Practical without being pragmatic, mm -hmm. meaning allowing the Bible to provide the proper framework to examine our 
practices. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, then the, the, the test or a seminary is a clinic for the church. It cannot survive apart from a church, but it is also providing a critical lens to examine the practices in the church. So we rely on the church and we provide for the church and we cooperate with the church, and, but we are not the church. At the end, we are serving the church. And in the church, we worship one God and one people as a one people of God. Um, so in that sense, taking a critical role as an academy, uh, as a clinic, uh, we need to pay attention to the foundational text, the foundational document. And it is that insistence that will set us apart from um, other competing interests. Mm. And then along that line of thought, I, I really appreciate your answer. So would you uh, explain more how tests really cooperate with the need of churches mm. in that sense? Yeah. Yeah. So how 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 do you do that? And then now you have a role as a dean. It's right. different than the professor of New Testament. How how you deal with that issue? The metaphor that I tend to use is a medical school model. Um, okay. As a medical school, we focus on that which is, which is theoretical, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we are very mindful that which is clinical and practical. Mm -hmm. So we um, consider our local church network to be terribly important. There are many churches in the local area. In North Chicago and Waukegan in particular, we have 12 churches mm -hmm. serving as our partner churches. We have EACA, EFCA churches all over the world um, serving as partner churches. Mm -hmm. There we provide critical um, field ed internship possibilities. So we are working together with the church but at the same time, we provide a critical reflection of the practice of our interns. So at the same time, uh, we consider, um, you know, uh, the pragmatic um, and trendy um, to be trendy, mm -hmm. but not timely at the end, because we firmly believe in um, in the serious study of the word, um, even in the most practical disciplines. We um, use all available resources um, to provide a framework to examine our practices. So we have anthropologists, we have historians, we have sociologists mm -hmm. allowing us to be gospel-centered, mm -hmm. but at the end, it is the word that is determining um, how we act and how we behave. And then, so in other words, the professors from this uh, test, just like a medical team, uh, to prepare the future medical doctor, that's called pastor. And then, so uh, in the church, just like in the hospital, we have ICU. Right, um, I... right that's correct. Um, so, uh, but then um, a teaching hospital model is helpful oh. because we are not separated from the medical practice. Okay. So we are not simply dealing with the theoretical, but we are also dealing with the practical. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we provide a mechanism uh, to re examine in our practice. Every single of our, our practitioner is now church. Um, and we had um, the best critical Greek scholars applying. Mm. And at the end, we said no to most of them because they, they were not, uh, they may not be as concerned with training pastors. So our struggle is to be able to find professors who be interested and able to interact with the technical aspect of the study of the word, but at the same time fully committed to the church and to the gospel ministry. So okay. that balance is critical for us. And a teaching hospital model will provide a glimpse to the possibility of that balance. Mm. 
And then uh, it's so smooth for me to ask the follow question. You have a, we have done a uh, test, and then I always see your passion about your role. And then would you tell more about your mission and the ministry for text? Um, the society is changing. Uh -huh. um, this is a post COVID or uh, almost co post COVID um, mm -hmm. society or world. Um, and the needs are very different as well as compared to 10 or 20 years ago. Mm. Um, theological education has to be accessible, mm. but the personal presence is still important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One example, we insist on providing online education, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we insist on uh, providing synchronous interaction. Mm. Uh, we received recently a grant of $1 million providing a way for us to explore possibilities of uh, providing spiritual formation mm. uh, to students who may not be here on campus. But here on campus, we emphasize the importance of uh, in-person formation. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, needed as well. Mm -hmm. um, I remember two weeks ago um, in a youth camp in Sydney, Australia, Mm -hmm. um, I was asking um, the 18 year old there in the camp, um, do you rather to be in person or to be online? Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, they want to be in per person. Mm -hmm. They crave for being able to participate as a community of the people of God. So the balance then, is to provide accessible theological education while allowing space for a residential program. And for a long time, Tess has insisted on um, a strong personal residential presence. Mm. Um, and the needs have changed, but our insist insistence have not that this is at the end uh, probably our focus. But when you have a family, when you have um, uh, a ministry that you cannot uh, abandon for two year, two or three years, then we are hoping to provide um, synchronous online education, but allowing the formation of local cohorts mm -hmm. where you'll be growing with a community of scholars in a particular locale mm -hmm. uh, while able to um, participate uh, online um, to a residential program. Mm -hmm. And then, so is, uh, takes a lot of effort because you need to make use of the you mentioned that even there's a, a community scholar so you need to recruit the right person for the students it's a, a lot of effort it's not easy you think so right it is not easy and um um we do not want to be to do it in haste um and um we want to be careful so we rather have um smaller cohorts than oh. have a larger number that we cannot um responsibly handle in a sense mm -hmm. and there we also rely on the efca network mm -hmm. providing local pastors um as mm -hmm. mentors um as advisors for a particular local cohort so this particular year, we're exploring such possibilities. Um, mm. And just last week, we are developing certificate programs oh. as on-ramps to our degree, degree programs, um, mm. allowing students from all over the world to, to participate in a particular program. Mm. Um, so we have students signing up in the past um, three or four weeks um, from oh. Sydney, for example, and mm. possibly developing a cohort from Australia a very different time so, so allowing yeah. allow, allowing local pastors to be involved in there as well yeah so in other words you i think uh, you already have a strategy it's a it's with a global uh strategy is that right yes uh but the tension is to balance the global with the local oh. uh, we want to be present globally but we want to be responsible locally Mm -hmm. And again, we are not giving up and we are emphasizing the need for in-person residential program. But those who cannot join us, we are allowing for the possibility of providing local experience um, on their site, in their own turf. Um, and, uh, but we have to be very intentional and responsible in providing such uh, formation experience.
or are you going to set a time maybe even they cannot come for a long time they they have come to john for a, a short period is that would be case huh? right several possibilities we have many modular classes oh. so they can be on campus campus for two or three weeks mm -hmm. uh, we have professors reaching out to local cohorts and that will be one model as well mm -hmm. we can have local passes organizing local cohorts um, and that will be a third model so we are, uh, we are not simply exploring but we are implementing the various models um, but at the end um, formation um, uh, is a key and not simply um, uh, numbers or not simply pro disseminating information. So um, mm -hmm. uh, we, again, would insist on a responsible MDF program, for example. Yeah, I can tell you really always be aware about the transformation, not just passing the information. That's right, the right, right. And then uh, you have been traveling around the world to do military. Will you share some of your insight that will benefit the Trinity Yuan Jiao School. In different parts of the world, um, yeah. there are different needs. Um, mm -hmm. In Asia, in particular, the contextual concerns can be dominating. Mm -hmm. uh, the current political scene can be um, can dominate the agenda mm -hmm. and affect how students would pick their own classes. Mm -hmm. In the states, uh, we tend to be more theoretical, mm -hmm. um, and we need to have a balance of the two. Uh, to allow the theoretical to speak into, into the contextual. Mm. And um, so that is one part of it that we need to learn from our global partners mm. uh, to be able to be flexible and contextual. Second part of it, uh, in many parts of the world, um, global the well, theological education is still pretty much a residential experience. Mm. Um, I was in Singapore um, and... Um, uh, being able to live on campus mm -hmm. uh, is still considered to be an important part of um, theological education. And I think that, that is an important part of mm -hmm. uh, how we do theology as well. Um, so this year, um, here on campus, we have faculty student lunches, 10 mm -hmm. of them, oh. dealing with um, controversial topics, mm -hmm. allowing space for the inerrant word to be a powerful authoritative voice in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we are creating space mm -hmm. for dialogue in a polarized society, in a polarized post-COVID post world. Mm -hmm. This is a much needed space. And um, so the residential component, again and again, is one that I'll, I'll try to emphasize, mm -hmm. although we are going online at the same time. Yeah, that's good. Now have the lunch be between the faculty and students. It will be really beneficial for them. Huh? Right. Um, yeah, last time we have 80. Um, oh. And um, in the last meeting, we talked about um, how do children worship? Oh, wow. Do they worship through play? Do they worship through the study of the word? Do they oh. still worship through the hymns? Oh. And how does a two-year-old or three-year-old worship? Yeah. So, um, so and then early on, we have um, discussion on abortion, will we wait? Wow. Um, and yeah. how evangelicals uh, should yeah. be reacting. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in the post Roe v. Wade, um, you know, world and uh, how we can be responsible and loving and caring at the same time. So um, not an easy discussion, but um, the personal presence will allow us to be, to create um, a trusted space mm -hmm. um, for such a theological dialogue. Ah, that's good. Uh, you really uh, establish a good culture uh, for them. Right. right. And then the uh, uh, my uh, next question will be, throughout the years, I heard a lot of uh, churches, congregations, they voice out, the seminary have not provided the right, quote unquote, pastor for them. Mm -hmm. What you respond on behalf of text? Yeah. Um, it is always a good reminder from the churches as to the pastors we need. Mm -hmm. But we also see a trend um, where theological education or even biblical literacy, literacy is not being emphasized. I know a church in a local area uh -huh. where the pastors will not um, even have a half a year of theological training before assuming the role of a lead pastor oh. in the major church. Wow. 
So there is um, a pull, there is a demand for um, uh, for a pragmatic practitioner. Mm -hmm. But our insistence is that, yes, uh, we need to be practical, but we need to be guided and controlled by good biblical and theological framework. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to be learning from our students as well. Um, so if I were to come from Indiana, I want to listen to students from Ukraine. Okay. I want to listen to students from Asia. I want to listen to students from Australia. Mm -hmm. And to have a global perspective will mm -hmm. allow me to be a more effective pastor in my own church. Mm -hmm. So yes, for a year or two, theological education can be deconstructive to mm -hmm. some. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it is a necessary process where we grow into um, uh, a better uh, gospel uh, 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 herald uh, where we can be responsible in a different age uh, facing a diverse population, but being true to the text and to the biblical material. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for all your answers. Yeah, it was really a time to see the test uh, to respond to the need of the culture of the churches. And then as an evangelical feature in America, what we, can we pray for you in the test? How can we participate and support uh, Trinity Evangelical Divinity School? Yes, uh, do pray for us. Um, and um, since uh, the mid seventies, from what I've learned, um, financial challenges oh, yeah. are always real. Uh, we are a school with limited endowment and we rely on tuition, but at the same time, we want to provide the best theological education out there. Yeah. So there is a um, cost for running a residential program. Mm. And uh, with changing demographics, uh, with, with less college students graduating, um, that can be a challenge. But we're insistent on um, providing the best theological education possible. So do support us, do pray for us um, so that we can remain faithful to our task, to our mission, and to our gospel proclamation. Okay, let's pray together. Thank Dr. You. Father, we thank you uh, for you have done two tests throughout the years. We do pray you will provide more resources, more faculty, more students to prepare for your kingdom. Especially, we do pray that you continue make Dr. David Ball a blessing to what you call him to serve as dean or test. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let's say Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your time and for your prayer and support. Thank you.